Howdy. Boy, is this the home of Benjamin Cartwright? Yes, sir. Tether my horse. This man you're looking for, you uh, you say you lost track of him ten years ago. That's correct. His sister recently received a first letter from him, postmarked Virginia City, in which he stated that he sometimes does odd jobs at the largest ranch in the vicinity. I've ascertained that your Ponderosa fits that description. Yeah. Oh, this is one of my son's horse. Horse, I'd like you to meet Colonel Dunwoody. We've already met. If I may ask, why do you want this man? He's wanted for desertion by the United States Army 10 years ago at Snake River. My orders are to return him to Washington for a military court-martial. After 10 years? There's no statute of limitations on desertion. Well, you, uh, you haven't told us the man's name, sir. Well, I consider it extremely unlikely that he was used his right name. However, fortunately, I have a daguerreotype. You recognize him? It's hard to tell. The picture's pretty faded. The man is at least 10 years old if people change. They can't have changed that much. We hire a lot of extra help in the Ponderosa. They, they come and go. Huh? With your permission, Colonel, I'd like to keep this and do some checking. May I remind you, gentlemen, that withholding information from the federal government on a case of this kind is subject to rather severe penalties. If you have any information, I will be at the Virginia City Hotel. Good day, gentlemen. It's Bill Winters, Paul. I'm gonna go warn him. You do no such thing, else. But, but, Paul, we've known Bill 10 years. We're not gonna let the Colonel take him. Colonel says he's a deserter. Yeah, but why did he desert? Hey, Pa! Hoss! Get out of here, quick! I just rode in and found him hanging over the rail. Let's get him into the house. Hang out at the bottom of that house. It's been a long time since they had any trouble with Indians. Just showing it. don't we? Of course we don't. That means that we're withholding information from the government. I'm not sure we should get mixed up in this. Paul, the way we know Bill, we ain't got no choice. Now, who on earth could possibly gain anything by bringing to trial a man who refused to massacre innocent women and children? I could, Mr. Cartwright. Colonel, you shouldn't be out of bed yet. Oh, evidently not. Did that statement surprise you? Frankly, yes. It shouldn't. You see, I was the commanding officer who ordered that so-called massacre at Snake River. Doctor, now it's your turn. Can't get me. Yes, I can. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. 
Morning, Maria. All right, hey. Stop making so much noise. Can't you see your father is talking to Mr. Cartwright? Oh, we were just playing, Ma. Yeah, well, you just play somewhere else, huh? Go on. You too. And get me, Ma. Get him, get You stay for a cup of coffee? Oh, thank you kindly, Maria. I had breakfast just before I came over. Well, then you can use a cup of good coffee. Hop Singh is a pretty fair cook, but coffee is not one of his specialties. Well, if it isn't too much trouble. No trouble at all. Long about now, Bill's about due for his 14th cup. Oh, don't just stand there talking, woman. How am I going to teach the children any manners when their father just hasn't got any? <laughs> Good morning, Father. I've got some breakfast for you inside. Morning, Wayoka. Does he know? Oh, sure, Shawnee's no. He knew five minutes after the Colonel arrived in town. Yeah. Figured it'd probably be a waste of time, but I had to come over and tell you anyway. What do you aim to do? I don't know, Ben. He's bound to find out we are. I realize that. I want to thank you for going to all this trouble. You never asked to hear my side of it yet. That's up to you, Bill. I was his lieutenant. I was second in command. When he told me that he planned on making a surprise attack against the Shoshone village, the Snake River, I told him, I said, I was, I was, I was ready to fight Indians, but not to make war against women and children. He told me I was sentimental. He said that the only thing he wanted to do was to make sure that no white settler was ever molested by an Indian again. Now, this he proposed to do by setting an example, one example, a horrible example that all Indians would remember. That's true. He deliberately set out to destroy the village. Deliberately. He also informed me that as a, a soldier under his command, I had no right to question his orders. I beg you don't have to say anything. No, 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 I wanna, I wanna tell you, Ben. That night I sneaked out of the camp and I went down toward the Shoshone village. First one I ran into was Maria. She was washing some clothes down by the river. I put my hand over her mouth, and I told her to run and tell the people what was going to happen. As a result, some of the people escaped with their lives, including Maria and her father. Unfortunately, the majority of them had no reason to trust a white man. They stayed on. They can still hear the sounds. Shoshone have never forgotten. I'm afraid your guest is in very dangerous territory. Bill! Bill, please come here. Hurry. What's the matter, huh? Ben, get your horse. Come with me.
bring you something to eat. Colonel, I'm I'm sorry. I I just don't understand you. How can you how can you dog a man for ten years? Time has nothing to do with his crime. He should have been punished long ago. And his desertion was a blot on my record as a commander. A humiliation I have endured for ten years. Well, I intend that humiliation to end. You're perfectly willing to sacrifice this man to justify your slaughtering an entire Indian tribe. I understand from my inquiries in town that your own mother was killed with an Indian arrow. You go warn the colonel. I'm going to circle the house. Save your life. That's also the man who deserted me at Snake River. How can you be sure after all these years? Mr. Cartwright, I can recognize my own son. A son? Yes, is that so strange? Yes. It seems strange when a man is so intent on destroying his own flesh and blood. Then I suggest that you read your Bible, Mr. Cartwright, the story of Abraham. It is now apparent to me that you were familiar with the object of my search all the time. You men now have a choice. You can lead me to my objective, or you can suffer the consequences of your own obstructionist tactics. I will give you one hour to decide. Bill, do you want me to pack our things into the wagon? And run? Where would we go to, honey? We could go no, up... No, no, no. For ten years now, I've been afraid of this. Every street I walk down, every... every morning when I get up... No, if it's gonna come, I want to get it over with. No, Bill, no. We can go away. We can go up into the mountains. We can go so high they'll never find us. Members of my tribe would take us in. They'll protect you. And the children. Maria, there's something I haven't told you yet. Mama! <laughs> what is the meaning of this? Why do you break into my house like animals? Let him deny what he has done. You, come with us. By whose order? By order of Keokuk, chief of the Shoshone. No! For what reason? What for? Tell her. Tell her how you saved the life of the killer of our people. Tell her! I know that. I sent him. If you had killed the colonel, it would only bring further reprisals against our people. No. Tell her the real reason you saved him. That is the real reason, Maria. To prevent further reprisals. But also because he's my father. Up. Yeah. Just can't 
understand a man feeling that way about his own son. Well, he gave you the answer. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son to God, but the colonel's God is duty. I can respect a man's sense of duty, but I always figured that in a good soldier it was tempered with some kind of understanding. Well, I would say the colonel's qualifications as a good soldier leaves a great deal to be desired. That won't stop me from trying to reason with him. You'll be wasting your breath. Ben! Mr. Cartwright! Let me in! Help me! Where are you coming? Ben, help me. They took Bill. They came and took him away. Who took him? Shoshone. Kill him. I would doubt that. Yes. They'll kill him because he's got your blood in him. That may be, but they won't kill him. They won't risk another lesson like Snake River. Why did you come here? Haven't you done enough to us? I have no interest in your people. I came to take my son back to Washington to face up to his crime. Crime? You talk about crime? You murderer. Now you go back to your people and you tell them that if they harm my son, they'll face a worse punishment than they knew 10 years ago. I wish you were dead. I wish Running Wolf had killed you last night. I... <laughs> She's like all Indians. All emotion, no intelligence. That girl is your son's wife. You confess you are the son of the blood enemy of our people. He was your enemy, but that was ten years ago, Chief. Now, that was the time of war between the Shoshone and the white man. This is a time of peace. He talks of peace, while well, the bones of our women and children rot on the plains, and their murderer dares come back to mock us. You are quick to forget what your father has done. I think it is you who forget, oh wise shaman. You forget it was I who deserted the white man's camp to warn you. You forget to whom you owe your life. Did you forget too, chief? Whatever you have done, you remain a white man and the son of your father. I am more Shoshone than I am white man. Have I not married into your tribe? Wyoka? Wyoka, am I not a good husband to your daughter? A good father to your grandchildren? Then what of my grandchildren? Those whose cries I can still hear? Chief Keokuk, you're a great warrior. Now, you were wise in the ways of war. What my father did, he did as a soldier, as a way of war. Massacre is the way of a soldier? You know, terrible as it was, I have come to understand that my father wished to set an example to end this conflict with the Indians once and for all. Kill him. Kill him now. Silence. It is the way of the white man's government to end war by killing women and children. And it also will be Keokut's way. By killing the son of the white warrior who killed our sons.
You who have such great understanding will know that Keokut bears you no ill will and is grateful for past favors. But by the time the sun rises once more in the east, you will die. Keokuk has spoken. Keokuk has spoken. He knows, but he will not speak. Will you tell me where they have taken my husband? He is not your husband. He, he is not my husband. Then those are not my children. They have never been born. They do not exist, huh? Better for them if that were so. Hear me, old man. This is no time for games and secrets. You tell me where you've taken him. He will die before another sun has risen. They cannot kill their friend. Shame and disgrace. It was not your fault, my daughter. You did not know. No. I only know that I love him. Don't say that. I don't care who he is. I just know what he has been to me, to the children, and to you and all the Shoshone. Better to have died than to all my life to such a man. I love him more because he had the strength to do what he did. Tell me where they've taken him. I cannot say. You will tell me! I cannot say! Then get out of my house! He is still my husband, but you are no longer my father. Order you to go. Maria, you know he can't tell you. Wayoka, I want you to arrange a parley between Chief Keokuk and me. It will serve no purpose. Let me be the judge of that. The Shoshone know me as a friend. I ask as a favor. I will try. That's all I can ask. I make no promises. I cannot speak for Kyokok. Then how am I to know? Return to your home and wait. I will deliver your message. Taking their time sending an answer. Yeah, I'm afraid you're wasting yours, Paul. As soon as they find out Bill's his son, they're gonna be you're up. They're gonna be right here. Yeah? What makes you so sure? The Colonel's the man they want, and the Colonel is here. Well, if Keokuk agrees to see me, he won't do anything until after we've talked. I know him. Well, I hope you're right. Put the gun away, Adam. Yes, I quite agree. Firearms will not be necessary. I'm a little surprised in you, Colonel. I figured with your son being held prisoner by the Shoshone, you'd get a troop of cavalry together and storm them like you did at Snake River that time and finish up the job. That'll do, Hoss. Have you thought what you're going to say to Keokuk? I'm going to plead for your son's life. And remind them that Bill's their friend. We're all their friends. Won't work. It's worth a try. Bad strategy. You'll gain nothing by telling Chief Keokuk Bill's his friend. He knows that. He's not going to kill him because he hates him, but because he's my son. That's his way of answering my attack on his village. There's only one thing that can influence a mind like Keokuk's. My life in exchange for my son's. Well, that's very interesting, Colonel. I didn't think you had a father's feeling for a son. 
I'm sorry to disappoint you. The move is not an emotional one. It's based on strategy. Well, it's ridiculous. We're certainly not going to exchange one life for another. And I'm afraid, sir, you do not understand the Indian mind as well as I do. But I think I understand it well enough to know that I have a chance to plead for Bill's life. But if I had to plead for yours, it would be hopeless. You're going to get your answer, Paul. I'm going outside, Colonel. I think you'd better stay in here. You're wasting your time. Send a message. You wish to speak with me. I'd intended to go to see Keokuk. I'm honored that he's come to see me. And about what did you wish to parley? Well, you know that. About our friend Bill Winters. You surprise me, Ben Cartwright. You've always been a friend to Keokuk and to the Shoshone. But you already know I will not parley about the son of the man who murdered my people. One moment. Hold! I told you he wouldn't listen to you. But I have a bargain that will appeal even to your kind, if you will hear me. I will hear you. My life in exchange for my sons. It is a trick. I said you can't do this. I am going to do it. Well, it's a simple enough bargain. And one that you should like very much. It is well. Tomorrow, at the setting of the sun, the soldier with the pale eyes will present himself at the Shoshone camp. And the other will be released. No, first you release my son. Then I will surrender myself to you. You wish us to release the cubs so that we might capture the lion. Why should we believe you? Why should I believe you? You can kill two as easily as one. Enough of this! Tomorrow, at the setting of the sun, the prisoner will be taken to the front gate of his home. You, Ben Cartwright, Keokuk Trust, you will bring the murderer of my people, and there the bargain will be made. Otherwise, your son will die there. That was a devil's bargain you made, Colonel. What do you mean, a devil's bargain? If somebody's got to die at a heap side, it'll be the colonel as, as Bill Winters. I don't think that's what he meant. What did you mean, Paul? You mean, you think the colonel's got some sort of a scheme? No, I think he's perfectly willing to give up his own life for his son. And if he dies, what do you think's going to happen to Keokuk and the rest of his people? Yeah. Reckon the army would wipe him out, wouldn't they? But won't they do the same thing if they kill Bill? No. Bill is a deserter from the army. Probably go unnoticed. But if the colonel dies, there'd be a pretty big to-do about it. And he knows it. You mean he's willing to die just so more Indians will die? I think the colonel intends to do exactly what he came out here to do. No matter what it takes, he'll see to it that his son is returned to Washington for court-martial. And that includes sacrificing his own life, if need be, to keep Bill alive to face court-martial. Well, we are on time. I hope they are as prompt. 
Okay, Cook keeps his word. I keep my word too, sir. It's not just a man's word that's important. It's what motivates him. And this need of yours to avenge yourself on your son, it's not human. If you have been analyzing my motives, Mr. Cartwright, you're a more subtle man than I thought. But your opinion is of no consequence to me. doing down here? Did you have anything to do with the Shoshone freeing me? Well, the important thing is that you are free, Bill. You've filled out some. You're looking well. I haven't many vices. How's, uh, how was Mary? Your sister's well. I asked her to write me care of general delivery. Yes, I know. She didn't answer my letter. I advised her not to. I see. I suppose I... Uh, I should thank you for saving my life. No need. Evidently, your friends didn't approve. This is, uh, this is my wife, Maria. Yes, I know. We met before. you to meet somebody. Come on, Eddie, you too. Eddie? Edward. I named him for you. I didn't know you had children. Well, I guess there's no way I could have told you, is there? And I assume we are as far apart as ever? You're still my father. I named my firstborn after you. Pa? Is he really your pa? Yeah. He's your grandpa, too. No, he isn't. My oak is our grandfather. Oh, he's your grandpa, too, honey. This is my youngest. Her name's Maria. Little Maria? Edward, my grandchildren. Also the children of a Shoshone. Kids into the house. Come on. Go with your mommy. Come on. All right. Would you ride with me, please? Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't do that. You can't give up your life for mine. That is not precisely my intention. You don't understand how they, they, they feel about you. They're gonna kill you. They'll, they'll, they'll torture you. Neither prospect frightens me very much. 
Son, ten years ago, I gave you an order which you disobeyed. I'm giving you another order now. Go to your house with your wife and children. But it's not an order. It, it's my request. Now, what are you going to do? I'm going with him. And risk two lives instead of one? Your father is right. Your place is right here with your wife and your children. Bill, Bill you just make things worse. I'll go with him. I'll, I'll do what I can. If you're not back here by dawn, I'm coming up. When the soldiers come to avenge your death, your grandchildren are half Shoshone. I know. That's why I must not die. How do you intend to prevent that? By pleading for my life. They won't listen to you, not one word. They will listen to you. A little late for that kind of thinking, isn't it, Colonel? Perhaps, but will you try? Well, you know I'd have to do that. Thank you. I'll explain what I have in mind on the way. The sun has gone from the sky, O oh great chief Kiyoka. Where is your warrior with the pale eyes? He will appear with the price of the life of his son. Take care of my part of the bargain first, Mr. Cartwright. Kierkuk, you have the power of life and death over the prisoner. But before you decide, there is something he wishes to say to you. There is nothing he can say to me. And if you will not listen to him, listen to me. There is nothing you can say for him. I gave my word that I would speak for him. Speak. We will listen. Speak. I would like to remind you that the Colonel did what he did in time of war. And in war, just as your braves must follow your orders, so the Colonel must follow the orders of the great Nantan in Washington. And he was ordered to punish the Shoshones, to bring peace to the territory. But the massacre of women and children was not the way to bring peace. That is true. The Colonel realizes now that he was wrong. 
He wishes to amend that wrong. But if you kill him, there will be reprisals. And more Shoshone will be killed. Among them, more women and children. And how does the Pale Eyes hope to make amends for the wrongs he has done to my tribe? He will go to Washington. He will return to Washington and he will admit so that everyone can hear that he was wrong in attacking your village. He will say that such attacks can only bring more hatred. They can never lead to lasting peace. And he will apologize to your people. Apologize? Will that bring back our wives, our children? No. But it may save the lives of other Indian women and children. Words. Words. They spill from his mouth like poison. <laughs> Silence! How can I be sure the Pale Eyes will keep his promises? If I were not a man of my word, would I be here now? White man lies to save his own skin. <laughs> and if you were chief, what would you do? I would kill him. You would kill him? Knowing that many of our people would be killed in return? Even so. Do you feel no love for your people? I feel only hatred for their murderers. Look at him. This man one day will take my place. He cannot rule himself and he wishes to rule others. Hear me, pale eyes. I hate you more than any man. More than running wolf hates you. For he does not understand as I do how great was your crime. But ben Cartwright speaks good words, honest words. If I kill you, and many more of my people will be killed in turn, and more of yours, and again mine. Let history record it was Keokuk who put an end to this senseless chain of killings. And let history record it was Keokuk who brought peace to the Shoshone. Hey, Lies. You will promise to tell the whole truth to the great Nantan in Washington? I swear it. And you may go. None of my people will harm you. I have said none of my people will harm you. Go! see those parcels I brought back from Virginia City. Now, would uh, one of you be kind enough to deliver these to my son's house? Well, Colonel, of course, we'd be very happy to, but... my court martial. There's no need. We're tired of living in fear that somebody might discover his real name, sir. If it weren't for his love of us and his concern for my people, he would have gone back a long time ago. I'm proud of you. 
I'm proud of you both. And I think I can promise your husband back within six months. Six months? For desertion? Since I am the chief and only witness for the prosecution, by the time I get through explaining the circumstances, they may very well present you with a Medal of Honor. Now, I have something for little Edward. Thank you. And little Maria. Thank you. Open them. to remember your grandfather by. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, and your sons for helping me see the truth. Are you ready, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. for such a long time, Ben. I, I'm sure you understand how I feel about it. Of course I understand it. I guess I'm just sentimental about the old place. What is it, Ben? Something familiar about that man over there. And besides, I don't really need the money. Of course not. Well, what time is the next stage? Sacramento stage in about an hour. Are you sure there's nothing sooner? No, mister, that's it. Emily, excuse me. That, that man, I'm sure I know him. Give me a ticket on that Sacramento stage, please. Excuse me, sir, but... It is Frank Metford, isn't it? I don't believe that I... Ben. Ben Cartwright. Frank, I uh, got it. It's good to see you. I didn't know you were in this part of the country. Well, I, I live here. Emily, I want you to meet Frank Medford, the bravest, finest man I ever knew. Oh, come on, Dan. Oh, it's true, it's true. This is Miss Emily Colfax. A pleasure, Miss Colfax. How do you do? During the wild days of my misspent youth, Frank and I conquered Nicaragua. The two of you? Well, there were a few hundred others along. Well, we didn't need them. At least he didn't need them. Well, I have to be getting home. Will you be in town long, Mr. Medford? The Colonel Medford, ma'am. I don't know. My schedule is rather rigid. Long enough to have the pleasure again, I hope. Perhaps. It's been very nice seeing you. Goodbye, Ben. Oh, bye, Emily. Now, what are you doing in Virginia City? Well, I'm just passing through, Ben. I'm on my way to Sacramento. Well, you're going to have to spend a few days at my place. I have business. Uh, look, after all these years, you're not going to get away as easily as all that. Well, no, no, it's settled, Frank. Important. It's settled. It's all settled. Now, come on. Come back. Here, there. here, here. Let me take that. Got a step, Frank? You never could keep step, Cartwright. <laughs> hey! Yep! Yeah. Hey! Yeah. There were only six good-looking girls in that whole village. And there were uh, 70 of us, remember? Yeah. Well, I went into the one and only cantina, and there was Ben Cartwright, with four of those girls all to himself. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what makes that feat even more remarkable is the fact that, at that time, your father could not speak one word of Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boy, how'd you do it? Oh, <laughs> the only thing I remember is that afternoon in the Plaza Royale. We'd just beaten off the troops, and there were, oh, I don't know, six of us to keep some sort of order in the plaza. And then they attacked again. Oh, maybe a hundred of them charging down the street. The thing I do remember is Frank standing all alone in the middle of that plaza, bullets kicking up all around him, cigars stuck in his teeth, lighting grenades and tossing them as fast as he could. He broke up that first charge single-handed. It had killed every one of us. Frank, I think that's... that's the bravest thing I ever saw. They should have given you a medal for that. Well, they did, after you left. That was when I was promoted to colonel. 
After all, it's the least I could do for saving my pa's life. <laughs> oh, horse. Oh, hi, Paul. No head company. Someone here I want you to meet. Now, remember me telling you once my ship was laid up and I heard there was a little excitement down in Nicaragua? Yeah, you ain't figured on going back. Oh, possibly, possibly. <laughs> well, this is the fellow that talked me into going there years ago. Colonel Frank Metford, my son Eric, better known as Hoss. I'm right. pleased to meet you, Hoss. Thank you, sir. Pleased to meet you, Colonel. My Paul's had a lot of good things to say about you. Uh, Paul, have you heard from Adam? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a telegram. I think he's going to make the deal. Hot dogs. <laughs> then tomorrow, we'll, I'll go into town to see about the land. A little business deal we're working on, Frank. Little? We pull it off, it'll be about the biggest thing that's ever happened around here. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to be young? When you're young, every deal is the biggest. <laughs> yes, I remember. You know, Ben, I often wondered uh, how you made out after we said goodbye in Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. I see now I had no reason to worry about you. Well, I have no complaints, Frank. From all appearances, you're a man of wealth. I have my three sons. They're my wealth. <laughs> what about yourself? I always figured you'd wind up at least a general. <laughs> well, soldiers of fortune, Ben, aren't really much in demand. So I went into commerce. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I never married. I don't know, too busy making money, I guess. Uh, I've seen it happen. Oh, you're here on business, then? Yes, you might say that. Uh, I'm a director for the Haverford Company. They deal in farming and ranching equipment, you know? Yes, yes, and I do know, indeed. Big company. I thought their operations were back east. We're expanding. That's why I'm here. I'm going to open up these western states of yours as new territory. I can get you all the business you want right here in Virginia City. Introduce you to all the right people. That wouldn't be necessary, Ben. I insist. But, Ben, I... No arguments. <laughs> It was nice of you to drop by, Emily. My brother and I have been wondering why you turned down Ben Cartwright's offer for your land. Oh, it's out of sentiment, I suppose. It was my father's ranch. And I, I just keep hoping that someday I'll be able to put it to the proper use. Oh, Miss Emily. Frank, this is Asa and Will Flanders. One of my oldest and best friends, Colonel Frank Metford. And of course, you know Miss Emily. Yes, I do. Well, any friend of Ben's, always welcome here. Pleasure, sir. How, How are you, you sir? Nice to meet you. Colonel, this is a surprise. I thought you might have left town. Oh, I, uh, I talked him out of that. As a matter of fact, he'll be here for a few more days, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> I just thought I'd introduce the Colonel to some of the town's influential citizens. <laughs> You're from the East, Colonel? Yes, New York and Philadelphia, mostly. Uh, I'm out here now trying to get the uh, feel of this area. Anything specific in mind? I'd rather not divulge that at the moment, gentlemen. However, confidentially, don't be surprised if some big Eastern money moves here soon. Really? Yes, as a matter of fact, if things work out as I feel they will, the sky may be the limit. Well, this all sounds very mysterious and important. Well, I know that you gentlemen have business to discuss, so, uh, Ben, if you have any other stops in mind... Well, Frank, I need a few minutes with uh, Will and Asa, but I thought we'd have lunch. Fine. I have to be going, too. Goodbye again, Colonel. Miss Colfax. Oh, Emily, uh, why don't you uh, have lunch with us? Frank, suppose you take Miss Emily to the hotel, and I'll join you in a few minutes, uh, if, if you're free. I would be honored, Miss Colfax. Well, if I won't be keeping you from anything. Not at all. Well, gentlemen, a pleasure to meet you. Colonel? What's the answer to my offer? Ben, we haven't quite made up our minds yet. Well, I don't think you'll get a better deal. You've been trying to sell Alder Valley for over a year without any takers. Well, that's just it. All of a sudden, you want to make a fast deal. Why? You holding something back on us, Ben? Asa, I'll tell you exactly why I want Alder Valley. Right at this very moment, my son Adam is trying to buy the whole Crow Track brand. They're selling out? Yes, they are. And that means about 3,000 head of cattle. Now, Adam can't close the deal until I'm assured of grazing land. You don't have enough grazing land on the Ponderosa? Not with an additional herd of that size. Now, gentlemen, I 
I really do need an answer today, one way or another. It sounds fine to me, Ben. Good. How about it, Asa? I think I'd like to talk some more. Well, all right. I'll be having lunch. You know where I'll be. Thank you. Bye, Ben. You ruined the whole deal. I just think he's up to something. I don't care if he is. We're getting our money, aren't we? I'm going to take the deal. You mark my words. You'll see that I'm right. You didn't. I did. Rode right into the president's ball on a white mule. And won my bet with Commodore Vanderbilt. Well, what did they do? The president had me thrown out bodily. You deserved it. I agree. What hurts, though, is that uh, he still hasn't given me back my white mule. Oh, now you are exaggerating. Well, lovely ladies always inspire me to my best efforts. Now, if you were to walk in directors of Delmonico's, I guarantee you, you'd turn every head. Oh, you do exaggerate. No. Not one little bit. If you'd like to come in, I'll have Martha make some refreshments. Well, thank you, Miss Emily, but uh, I do have some business to attend to. I've enjoyed this afternoon more than you can imagine. Oh, but I can imagine. I know how much I have enjoyed it. Good day, Colonel. Good day, Miss Emily. Well, I waited dinner for you, Miss Emily. Oh, I'm sorry, Martha. I was detained at lunch by a gentleman. A gentleman, Miss Emily? Yes, a fine gentleman from the East. Oh, now, Martha, don't look so shocked. He's a very dear friend of Ben Cartwright's. I think he may come calling. Well, I think that would be very nice. Do you? I wonder. Miss Emily, eight years is too long to sorrow over a young man who died. Now, when this gentleman comes calling, you be ready for him. That's what I say. All right, Martha. He is a very exciting gentleman. And it, it would be fun again. Clerk? Yes, sir. How much is that ticket to Sacramento? Seven dollars and a half. I don't seem to have that much on me. How far can I go for two dollars? Nowhere I know of. Mister, looks like you're stuck here for a little bit. We can forget about this patent reaper of yours. Very high profit item, Mr. Austin. I can't store nothing that size. Same goes for these gang heralds and cultivators. But they move very fast, sir. You might not even have time to uncrate them. 
You drummers, you're all the same. You'd lie to your own mothers. Look, mister, the most I can see my way clear to taking on would be one of them plows. One plow? Out of all that I've shown you? One plow. That one, right there. I thought you were a man of vision and enterprise, Mr. Austin. Take it or leave it, mister. I will take it. Now, let me see now, that's uh, $15 wholesale. Uh, Mr. Austin, I wonder if you could possibly let me have, uh, oh, say, uh, seven fifty of that on deposit now. I pay on delivery. Yes, I know, but um, it happens I'm uh, short of cash right now. Oh. Ordinarily, I don't do business that way, but uh, since you're a friend of Ben Cartwright's, uh... all right, I'll draw up a receipt. Thank you, sir. Colonel, how nice to see you. Why, good morning, Miss Emily. What can I do for you, Miss Colfax? Oh, you too, go on. I want to look at some material. Uh, Mr. Austin, as a matter of fact, I do have some other appointments. Uh, why don't I come back later? No need, won't take but a minute. Well, Miss Emily, you look very pretty this morning. Thank you. Oh, good morning, Emily. Hey, sir. Now, Colonel, what are you doing, buying yourself a store? No, not this morning, Mr. Flanders. Just sign here, Colonel. Oh, um, Mr. Austin, why don't I uh, drop by and pick up that uh, other item later? <laughs> Just as easy to do it now. Well, thank you very much, but uh, I'll come back. Miss Emily, if you are through, I would be honored to walk you home. That's very kind of you. Oh, uh, when can I expect delivery on the plow? Uh, within ten weeks, Mr. Austin. All right. Don't forget the 750. I won't, Mr. Austin. Be assured of it. Oh, I beg your pardon, Colonel. Do I understand that you're selling Austin a plow? Plows, Mr. Flanders, plows. 750 of them, to be precise. 750 plows? Exactly. Mr. Austin should triple his money within six months. You see, it's a brand new item which has just been released on the market by a firm which I hope to organize. Since Mr. Austin is a friend of Mr. Cartwright's, I thought I'd do him a small favor. Well, that was very generous of you. Uh, Colonel, I know this country pretty well. Hey, Austin couldn't sell 750 plows around here in 10 years. Well, I wouldn't be too certain of that were I you, Mr. Flanders, particularly in view of uh, certain negotiations in which I am involved. Oh, what kind of negotiations? He said, don't be so inquisitive. What were you going to say, Colonel? Can I trust you to be discreet, Mr. Flanders? Why, of course. I'm involved in a project of vast importance. What kind of project? Transportation. You mean a railroad? Well, please, no more for the moment. I uh, Don't press me further. Well, you've taken Austin in. I mean, that's why he's uh, buying all those plows from you, isn't it? After all, Colonel, I'm a friend of Ben Cartwright's, too. Uh, no more right now, I beg you. Of course. Really, Ace, I'm ashamed of you. Well, Emily, business is business. Right, Colonel? But not at the expense of manners. Come along, Colonel. Mr. Flanders. Well, this has been most pleasant. I'm sorry that our acquaintance has been so brief. Then you really are leaving tomorrow. Yes, I'm afraid that I must. This is a bit forward, but since you are leaving so soon, perhaps I can be forgiven. Could we have lunch again, Colonel? Well, I don't know, Emily. I, uh, I do have some unfinished business with Mr. Austin. Please. Only this time, instead of your taking me to the restaurant, I'll have Martha fix us a picnic basket and we can go out by the lake. Why, that sounds splendid. I haven't been on a picnic for a long time. You've made this a very lovely afternoon, Miss Emily. Oh, just Emily, please. It has been lovely. I don't remember when I've known such peace and contentment. I hate the thought of leaving. 
Do you have to? Yes. Will you be coming back, Frank? That's hard to say, Emily. I don't suppose a man like you finds many attractions in Virginia City. Oh, that's where you're wrong. I have found more genuine friendship here in a day or so than I dreamed possible. You see, Emily, I'm actually a very lonely man. I find that hard to believe. Well, why don't you just stop? Settle down someplace. I can't, Emily. Surveying for your old railroad that important? Sorry, I, I guess I shouldn't have mentioned that. It's a secret, isn't it? Silly, isn't it? That I have to keep secrets, even from you? Emily, a man can be trapped by responsibilities. Building bridges, digging tunnels, and deciding railroad rights of way. Those are very important things, aren't they? There's more to it than that. Now, that's all I know how to do. If you could, would you stop traveling? Like a shot. But it's not very practical, I'm afraid. There goes a colonel and Emily Colfax. He gets around pretty good for a stranger in town. Well, he probably seems exciting to Emily. She's led quite a lonely life these past few years. Colonel and his talk about big secret deals. I can't figure him. Then don't try, Asa. Maybe you better use your time helping me figure the taxes on the Smathers sale. Ah, that's penny ante stuff. That's the trouble with you, Will. You don't think big like Ben Cartwright or even the Colonel. You do the big thinking, Acer. I'll penny ante our living. Doesn't it strike you as a, as a coincidence that Ben Cartwright made a fast land deal with us just as the Colonel comes into town to scout for a railroad? Oh, Asa, from what you told me, the Colonel didn't really say all that. He didn't have to say it. It was plain without it. Uh, I tell you, Will, he and Ben are up to something. Then that's their business. Well, not when Ben Cartwright is using our land to make himself a nice fat profit, it's not. Where are you going? Asa. Asa, good to see you. Save me a trip. Oh, about that option on Alder Valley? Yep, got to exercise that option before the time runs out. We need that land pretty bad. Adam's already on his way with that crow track herd. Yeah, he got it all right. I'm sorry to hear that. I came out here to get that option back. Asa, we made a deal. I wouldn't have made that deal if I would have known what you and the Colonel were working on. Colonel and I aren't working in anything. <laughs> Colonel went to Sacramento yesterday. I just talked to him this morning. Oh. Well, I guess he's selling some of his farm equipment. How about that other thing? That uh, secret project he's working on? What are you talking about, Asa? Emily Colfax, that land of hers. He wouldn't be trying to do something with that, would he? Like the right of way to a railroad? Asa, what the devil are you talking about? All right. If that's the way you want to leave it. But I'm sure going to talk to a lawyer about getting that option back. It's all that talk about the railroad and the colonel, Paul. I don't know. I'm sure going to find out. Uh, 
Do you know where I might be able to find Frank Metford? Won't tried... you come in? Well, I tried the hotel, and they said they didn't know anything about him there. Uh, I've been trying to tell you he's here. Now will you come in? Oh, thank you. He's upstairs washing up. I invited him to dinner. Oh, well, uh, perhaps I'd better come oh, down. No, will you join us? No, I... thank you. I, I really just want a word with him. I'm so pleased you introduced us. He's certainly a fascinating gentleman. Well, I'm glad that you're getting along so well. Why, Ben, I didn't expect to see you. Well, I didn't expect to see you either, Frank. Uh, I checked all around town, went to the hotel, and they didn't oh, see Oh, yes. You. Well, they were full up. I had to go to a rooming house. Uh, may I, Emily? Certainly. Well, Ben, uh, what is it? Well, uh... Thank you. Ace of Landers came out to see me, and he started talking about some project that you and I are supposed to be involved in. Ace of uh, Landers? Yeah. He must be imagining things. Well, he seemed pretty positive, so... Oh, I don't know where he could get hold of such a wild idea, Ben. Ben, you're suspecting me of something. Oh, no, no, not a Frank. No, of course not, really. Now, admit it. No, of course I, I'm not. Emily, what do you do with a man like that? Ben, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What? You know, Ben, this must all stem from a uh, slight misunderstanding which occurred at the general store this morning. Asa Flanders was there. He must have misinterpreted some of the things that I said. Well, well, I know Asa. He's full of suspicions and, and frustrations. That, well, it must have happened that way. However, if anything does come up, rest assured you'll be in on it. That's very kind of you, Frank. Uh, look, why, why stay in a rooming house? Why not come back to the Ponderosa? Well, I, I'm leaving tomorrow anyway, Ben. Oh. I suppose we can't ask you to stay any longer, can we? We'll make sure that we see each other before you leave. Count on it. Emily? Goodbye, Ben. Frank, Ben. Frank, I didn't know you were leaving so soon. Well, I don't want to, Emily, but I have no choice. What about your railroad project? Our little secret? Well, I've done all I can on that, my dear. Now I really must be moving along. Frank, would you call for me in the morning with my buggy? I'd like to show you something. What are you scheming? You'll see. And now come in to dinner, or Martha will have our scalps. Miss Emily. Good morning, Emily. I was just coming to have a word with you. Perhaps later. The Colonel and I are going for a drive in the country. The Colonel seems to enjoy looking over our neck of the woods. I'll be frank with you, Colonel. My brother and I'd like to be cut into that railroad deal of yours. Well, my dear Mr. Flanders, I've already explained to you I'm not at liberty to discuss that matter. Really, Asa? Well, as I said, Emily, business is business. Just tell me one thing, Colonel. What direction is that railroad coming into town? I'm sorry, I can't tell you anything at all. And now we must be going. Stop here, Frank. Who? Oh. oh, this place, what is it? It's mine. My father left it to me when he died. Why, it's beautiful, Emily. There's over 4,500 acres here. No one's living here? No one's working it? No. It seems a shame. You know, if it had been me, I would have had the house on that knoll right over there. I've had my eye on that very spot. Oh, you've got grass, and you've got water all year round. Why, you run 200, 300 head of cattle here with no trouble at all. Look at that meadow over there. That meadow is crying for corn and wheat. You'll still have plenty of room for your kitchen crop. Oh, Emily, there's so much that could be done here. Yes. 
but it takes a man to do it. Frank, I know this isn't very big or very important after the kind of things you've been doing, but I, I thought that... I know what you're thinking, Emily, and I thank you for it. But you should forget about me. I wouldn't be worthy of you. Not worthy? Don't you think you ought to let me decide that? Emily, there are things about me that you don't know. I'm sure there are. I can't imagine there's anything so dreadful that it would make me change my feelings. I know myself. And once you came to know me, your feelings would change, believe me. But when you love someone, what they've been or done in the past is unimportant. No, Emily, no. I'm saying this for your own good. Please, forget me. I see. Well, I, I guess I found out what's really important to you. Would you drive me home, please? Emily, will you marry me? Frank, what? Emily, I love you. Will you marry me? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes, darling. Come in, Pop. 3,000 help. Herd's bedded down about 12 miles out. Adam said he'd drive him into the valley sometime tomorrow. Oh, that's great news. That's really good news. How is Adam? Oh, he's fine. Crew's all right, too. Good. What about the cattle? Uh, the cattle are just so-so right now, but they've been two days without water. You give him a couple of days in that valley, you won't find better-looking stock anywhere. Oh, that's great news. Great news. First thing in the morning, we're going to take these supplies out to Adam. Listen, he said he wanted one of Hop Singh's apple pies and uh, some coffee he doesn't have to chew. <laughs> hey, look. Why wait till tomorrow? How come little Joe and I don't load it up and take it on out there now, Paul? That's a wonderful idea. Uh, go tell Hop Singh to get that apple pie ready. Will do. <laughs> this. I have never seen such two beaming faces. Ben, we have wonderful news. Frank and I are going to be married. <laughs> well, aren't you going to congratulate us, Ben? Well, of course I am, of course. <laughs> ben, you should have warned me. The colonel just swept me off my feet. Well, this day is just full of the best news. When, when's the big occasion? Tomorrow at noon. Really? Well, we've made all the arrangements and my wedding dress is ready. Well, of course. Why not? The sooner the better. Ben, I'd like you to give me away. Oh, Emily, I, I'd be honored. Frank, you don't have a best man. Well, no, not now, Ben. I was hoping you, but... Uh... Hoss! Hoss is the man for you. And, and, and both of you, please, you must do me this favor. Please be married here in the Ponderosa. Well, Ben, we had planned to be married at Emily's house. I... Well, after all, I did bring you two together. Oh, ben, we couldn't impose on you. Emily, I insist. Please. Thank you for everything, Ben. Oh, that's so beautiful. Now, Martha, you mustn't cry now. Miss Emily, I've saved my tears for your wedding for eight years. Don't deny me now. Oh, I'm so happy. Right over there, sir. Right, Ma. Yes, sir. What with the music? All the ladies crying ain't nothing like a wedding, is it? No. Oh, I wonder why we don't have one of our own around here, then. Paul, what I meant is, I like weddings as a spectator only. Now, you know what he means. He likes to kiss the bride without paying the price. Oh, come on, let's get dressed. If 
If you're going to drink, go over to the saloon. This office is for work. I've been working well. I've been studying. I've been studying how Ben Cartwright stole this land from us. And then that lawyer Nelson saying we can't do nothing about it. Once and for all, Acer, will you get off that subject? We made a deal fair and square. Now stop trying to make something else out of it. Nights that I lay awake, thinking, planning, so that I'd know the chance, the big one, when it came. And then they stole it. Right out from underneath our nose. Asa, you sicken me. You're brooding over missed chances. Where do you think it's going to get you? Better than thinking like a penny pension bookkeeper all the time. My penny pension bookkeeper's mind is what's kept us solvent and respectable all these years. But this time I'm right, Will. Can't you see that a railroad right away through our valley could, could bring us a fortune? If I could only get that land back. We made the deal. Now get those suspicions out of your greedy little mind. Go home and sober up. How much longer do we have to wait? Well, until O'Brien's ready, Colonel. You might as well get used to waiting. You've got a lot of news now. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. Miss Altman, Miss Blanchard. Don't the Colonel make a mighty handsome bridegroom, though? He certainly does. Colonel, stop your worrying. Why, you used to dodge bullets in battle. They tell me that getting married ain't much worse. Oh, you really are helpful. <laughs> well, it's a part of the tradition, Joe. You're supposed to sort of jubilate the bridegroom. <laughs> like, uh... Forgetting the ring. Oh, come on. Boss, you didn't. No, just teasing you, Colonel. Got it right there. <laughs> well, that's it. It's your last chance to run for the door. No, no. Not for anything in this world. Please. I came here to get our land back. We're having a wedding here. This is no time to discuss business. I say it is. You cheated us out of Alder Valley. No, we'll, we'll discuss it later. We'll discuss it now. I want that option back. Look, okay, sir. I have 3,000 head of cattle due late today. I'm not going to let those cattle die because of some fool notion in your head. We have a deal, and that's that. But you really wanted that land for a railroad right away. You and the colonel been conniving ever since he came into town. He said, you're drunk now, please. What's... Admit it! You've been talking about that railroad coming through town. You said that he was involved in it. Now, are you going to deny that? I certainly am. My business here is my private affair. You have no right to question me. Asa, you've been prying into the colonel's business ever since he came into town. Asa, we've had enough of this. Now, please get out. You're all in this together. But I'm going to get the truth out of you, Cartwright. You Cartwrights think you can get away with anything. But this time, you're going to find out you're wrong. Landers, listen to me. Nobody stole your land for a railroad right away. Believe me. Believe you? Why should I believe you? Because there is no railroad. Because there is no right of way. You see, Asa? It was all in your imagination. You, you dreamt it up. Now, please, let us get on with the wedding. And it was you, Colonel. And nothing but a liar. Everything that you said is nothing but a pack of lies. Well, what about it, Colonel? Yes, that's right. Nothing but a pack of lies. Frank, you don't have to answer such a ridiculous statement. It's not a ridiculous statement, Emily. 
At last, someone is telling the truth, Ben. I did allow him to think I was surveying for a railroad. I did allow him to think that you were in on it. I lied, just as he says. Fool out of everybody. Hey, sir. I'm sorry, Ben. I'm sorry about everything. But if he was my friend, I'd run him out of town on a rail. Emily, I... Who cares about an old railroad? No, it's not just the railroad, Emily. I lied about everything. I'm nobody. I don't know any of those important people I talked about. I'm not a director in a company. I... I'm just Frank Medford, a traveling salesman. Because, Ben, ever since those days in Nicaragua when I was a so-called hero, when the village girls cheered us as liberators, nothing exciting, nothing important has ever happened to me. You felt you had to try to keep on being a hero, make yourself important by lying. You didn't have to do that, Frank. Not for me. I tried not to, Ben. That first day that I saw you in Virginia City, I was trying to get away. I tried to leave after that. But then I was trapped. And then I needed to be someone important. Someone like you. You are everything I ever wanted to be. And you've done everything I ever wanted to do as a man. One thing I did not lie about, Ben. I love Emily. With all my heart. I don't want to hear any excuses for it. Excuses? I think what Frank did today took courage. A tremendous amount of courage. What he did in Nicaragua took a lot of courage. But what he did today, he humiliated himself before the very people whose respect and admiration he needed. That took a greater kind of courage. Ben, I'm a woman. That's something more important. A few minutes ago, I was going to be married to a man I thought loved me. 
He does love you. That's the, the one truth in his life. Truth. I've got to be sure. How do I know he wasn't lying when he said he loved me? Emily, tell me something. Have you been happy these past eight years? Since that young man died on the eve of what was to have been your wedding? You know I haven't. Well, haven't you used your grief as a crutch to keep going? Well, Frank uses his lies as a crutch. I don't say he's right. But maybe we all need some kind of crutch occasionally. Five minutes ago, you said you loved him. Now, have your feelings changed so completely in so short a time? I don't know. How will I ever know if... If he loves you, trust him. Give him a chance to prove it. Emily, there isn't much time. some unfinished business. Give me those bags. Emily, I... Now, you heard what Ben said. Emily, you know the kind of man I am. Yes, I know. But you're also the kind of man who is going to marry me. In spite of all you know, you still want to marry me? Yes. I love you, Frank. Frank, I always thought you were a man of action. consignment of lumber the Gunnar shipyard has ever purchased. Thank you, gentlemen. I hope Ponderosa Timber builds a whole fleet for you. And I'll drink to that, too. <laughs> well, I guess it's time to entertain the paying customers, Charlie. Gentlemen. <laughs> Gentlemen. That's the funniest thing that's going to be said in here all evening. <laughs> Gentlemen, I am paid to sing here. And I expect a little courtesy when I do. So please pay attention, or else the next bottle may not bounce off that wall. <laughs> She? I've never seen her before. Johnny so long at the fair. He promised to buy me a trinket to please me. And then for a smile, oh, he vowed he would tease me. He promised to bring me a bunch of blue ribbons to tie up my bonny brown hair. Oh, dear. <laughs> Forget it, Dolly. <laughs> Sing any one of your talents. Let's see what you can do. 
You stink of dead fish. I'm gonna teach you some manners. Go! Friend, why don't you go back to your drink? And what if I don't? Why don't they buy you a drink? Bartender, how about a drink for my good friend here? Her kind of woman ain't worth fighting over. Yeah. Drink hearty. Hello, Ben. Long time. Long time. How have you been? Oh, Brazen. In and out. Why, why this? I don't eat, I get hungry. What about Ken? How are the children? They're dead. I have to go now. Wait. So many things I want to know. Oh, Ben. The Rita Marlowe that you know is dead, too. Dead and buried. So let's just leave it that way, huh? Anything broken? No, just run down. Well, drink will take care of that. Oh, get one for me, will you, Ben? There. What you need is good food, sunshine. Ben, please, after the drink. And just just a little accident. I'll be all right in a few minutes. Why'd you give him a bad time? Because he raided one. Not when he spends money in my place, he don't. Look, you don't do my business any good. You better get yourself a new job. Look, I get a week's pay. These bar tabs you ran up, they show you owe me. Call us even. Sam, could you let me have a few dollars? You'll get it back. Honey, I'm out to make money, not give it away. Put out the light when you leave. Oh, that's big of Sam. What happens now? No. No problem. I'll make out just fine. You'll make out about as far as the street. And you fall flat on your face. And don't keep your friends waiting. They've left. Give me $10. I'll give it back to you as soon as I get a job. Money isn't the answer. <laughs> sure is a good start. I have a better one. Look, all I want from you is $10. You're going to give it to me? Fine. If not, then get out of here. If you want to kill yourself, there are better ways of doing it. I'm sorry. I have no right to say that. Say what you want. I couldn't care less. I'll make a deal with you. You come out to the Ponderosa. And stay with us for a month. Just one month, that's all. And after that, I'll give you whatever money you need to start over again. No strings? No strings. Well, what have I got to lose? All right. All right, you have yourself a deal. Good. Remember this, Ben. Don't expect me to be any different than I am now. 
I'm not about to change. For you or for anybody. Understand? I understand. Don't it, Bob? Your stage line's getting more efficient all the time. It ain't but three hours late already. Sorry, boss. Should have been here by now. This is uh, my son, Horse. This is Mrs. Marlowe I telegraphed you by. Yeah, our pleasure to have you. Oh. Let me take things yeah, down. Get Where's the rig? Right over here, Paul. Right over here, Mrs. Marlowe. Can I help you, Horse? Anything happen while I was gone? Not a thing, Paul. Everything rolled along smoothly as can be. Good. Yeah, except one thing. We, we lost our barn, Paul. It what? burned down. What? I'm just funny. Paul. <laughs> oh. You and the lady go ahead. I got some chores I got to do, and I'll catch up with you later. I'll catch up with you later if I hear any more fun out of you. Don't be late for supper. Yes, sir. You know me better than that. Yeah. Now, again, a pleasure. Well, we had a long trip. But a hot bath and a good meal will make the world a difference. Ben, I want a drink. We'll be at the Ponderosa in a couple of hours. Please, I need one now. Blue. Oh, good morning, Ben. You open for business yet? Well, not till noon. New law the sheriff put in last week. Well, I'm sure the sheriff won't mind if we bend his law just a little. Now, would you get me a bottle, please? If I get cut, it'll be my job. Please, just this once. All right, just this once. Mace, this is, uh, Mrs. Marlowe. She's staying with us out of the Ponderosa for a couple of weeks. Mace and Dell. Well, I'm sure you'll enjoy your stay. Yes, I'm sure I will, too. Now, uh, how about my drink, huh? I'll be thirsty again before we reach your place. Oh, I've been meaning to ask you. I have a chair. It needs some work. Leg splinted. You think you'd have some time to look at it? Well, I'll make time. I say Friday. Friday? Fine. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That's a loon swamper. What's his name? Hey, sit down. I've seen him somewhere before, but I can't remember where. They've been a prize fight ring. <sighs> yeah. You're right, in San Francisco. A friend of mine took me. Sindel knocked his man out in the second round. Oh, he really had a punch. Yes, Mace was a leading contender. What happened to him? He uh, decided to give it up. For what? Working in a saloon? It's honest work. I can't understand why it takes a female so long to get ready for supper. I can't understand why it takes you so long to eat supper. Because eating supper is <laughs> a dang sight more pleasurable than getting ready for it. That's why. Hey, Bud, did you tell her what time we sit down? Yeah, I told her.
afraid that you'll be dining without me this evening. You see, the, uh, the trip wore me out more than I realized. Would you, uh, would you like your supper in your room? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. I have everything, uh, in my room that I need to make me comfortable. So if you will excuse me, I will say good night. Rita, sleep well. sick in soul as well as in body the woman I remember was beautiful as gentle a human being as I'd ever known two lovely children a boy and a girl her husband was a lawyer that I knew some years back what happened to her Paul she didn't say where or when or how just told me that her husband and her children were dead. Just that. They were dead. I'm hoping that we can find some way to help her. Well, we'll do everything we can to help her. Well, let's have some supper. You see, ma'am, there ain't nothing to it. You just clean the hoof out with this hoof knife. Hand me that rasp, will you? Then you level it up so he don't wobble when he stands up. Just like doing your nails. As soon as I get this one done, I'll let you do one. these flowers down by the stream. I thought you might like them. See you at supper. Thanks, I've had enough. What's the matter? Why should anything be the matter? You seem restless. Oh? I don't see why. You and your sons have seen to it that I've been properly entertained and kept very busy. But tell me something, Ben. Why is it that there isn't any liquid refreshment in this house? It might help if you didn't have anything while you were here. Did you think that it would get washed out of me in one month? I thought it would be a good start. You thought wrong. Ben... You've had someone that you love, that you dearly love, die, haven't you? Yes. And you were with them when it happened? Yes, I was. And your presence gave them some kind of assurance and strength? I hope so. It did, Ben. I know it did. We were on our way to San Francisco, Ken and myself, the children. That night we were at a hotel. It caught fire. And our room was on the second floor. And we were trapped by the flames. Ken carried me to the window. 
And then he lowered me out and dropped me. My ankles were broken, but I could drag myself clear. And I turned back and I saw Ken going back for the children. And then there was a terrible crackling sound and the hotel started to collapse. I lay there and I heard my children calling out to me. I heard them screaming to me to come and help them. I tried. Oh, I tried. But I couldn't go to them. When I buried my family, Ben, I buried a way of life, and I'll never go back to it. I will never be hurt by it again. You know, when you found me in San Francisco, I was, I was all right. That's what I want, and that's what I'm going back for. There's no purpose. There's no meaning in that kind of life. But it is my kind of life. And don't feel pity for me, Ben, because I don't need it. So why don't you just give me the money now and let me get out of here? We made a bargain, and I'm going to keep you to it. Well, I guess I don't have a choice, do I? All right? All right, we'll play your silly game. Good night, Ben. Good morning, Mrs. Marlowe. That's wonderful. I don't think I could tell it from the original. Well, thank you. Wood works easily in my hands. Those hands do other things well, too. I've seen you fight. Is there something I can help you with? No. No, I'm just wandering around, trying to keep out of trouble. Been doing that long? Since I was a boy. I like building things. I should think there would be a demand in almost any town for men with your talents. Well, I keep busy. Then why do you work in a saloon? I need the money. Don't we all? Well, I want a shop of my own. Taking on extra work just makes it come that much sooner. And you plan on settling here in Virginia City? Yeah. Well, you have no problems. Then Cartwright likes you. I'm sure that if you were to ask him, he'd be more than willing to lend you the money to get started. Well, he already has. Well? When I stand in my shop, I want it to be mine. Only mine. I'll be beholden to no man. Good luck. Hey, uh, Mace, there's a couple of fellas up here to see you. See me? That's what they said there, up in front of the house. Well, I'll, I'll see you later. If you'll excuse me. You're excused. Big man. Surprised to see your old buddy boy? Hello, Dink. What brings you here? Listen to the man, Tiny. 
Three years we haven't seen each other, and all he's got for me is, hello, Dink, what brings you here? You do, baby. Why else do you think I'd bounce all over the countryside? Only for you would I do it. They told me in town it finds you here, so I'd have come. Just like that. Uh, you look great, kiddo. Great. Still flat and hard as a plank. You working out, keeping in shape? You still haven't answered me. Same old me. Straight and hard from the shoulder. Okay. Uh, this is Tiny Mac. Number one boy since you left my stable. There's never been one like you, Mace. You could have gone to the top all the way. Now he tells me that. Good luck. His right hand will take care of all the luck, but he needs something more. He needs to fight a name. Like you. You know better than that. Favor to an old pal, Mace. Your name's still big, carries weight. Tiny here climbing a ring with you? He's got to get a crack at the big boy. Forget it. You stay five rounds, you pick up an easy thousand. You're wasting your time here. You know, you get in the ring with me, you don't go five rounds. Enjoy your stay in Virginia City. All right. Go on, Tiny. Yeah, go on. All right. We'll be in a hotel to change your mind. Get your drinks for you. Well, good evening, Mrs. Marlowe. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, Mace. You can uh, buy me a drink. Well, I'd like to, but I'm working right now. Oh. Well, then, why don't you lend me a couple of dollars and I'll buy myself one? Thank you, kind sir. I will remember you in my prayers. Why don't you sit down here? I'll bring you anything you want. Thanks, but I don't drink alone unless I have to. Whiskey, twice. Stay here and keep out of trouble until I get back. I beg your pardon? Are you expecting anyone? The only thing I'm expecting is to have a couple of drinks and relax. Well, maybe we do it together. Care to join me and my friend? Why not, if you're buying? This is Tiny Mac, and I'm Dink Martin. Miss, um... Rita, that's good enough. I've seen you two before. All right. Oh, so you work for them? <laughs> no, I'm, uh, a guest. Unwilling, but nevertheless a guest. So, why stay? Well, there's a certain little matter called money. It takes some to go from one place to another. <laughs> could be. I could do you some good. Any good you'd do me, you'd come out ahead. Well, they'd both come out ahead if you'd arrange to get Mace in the ring. In the ring. Yes, yeah, a tiny. A hundred dollars buy you a lot of traveling. We're staying over a couple of extra days. You think about it. Hey, Swampert, where's our drinks? And bring one for the lady. Tiger, all right. 
why don't we get back into our corners, huh? How about you and me find a corner all to ourselves? With you, it would have to be a cave. I don't want to be a good girl. Because I am a good girl, I don't want a slob like you pawing me. The lady doesn't want oh. your company. Come on. Come on, you don't get paid for this. Now, let's sit down. Stick to swamping out saloons. That's all you're good for. Sorry, kiddo. I didn't hear don't put money in my pocket. I need him in a ring. You make it happen. I'll up it to 200. Get me out of here, will you, Mace? Yeah. Do you mind taking me home? I don't mind. If you're expecting thanks, you're wrong. That isn't necessary. But if you thought you were defending my honor, you're wrong, too. I lost that a long time ago. Well, I enjoyed it very much once we got past the rough spots. So did I. You know, Mace, when I first saw you, I said that you were an ugly brute. And Ben said, no, not when you get to know him. You know something? He was right. Good night. Mrs. Marlowe, could I see you again? Yes, if you'd like to. Well, I have to bring this back tomorrow, maybe then. All right. Tomorrow will be fine. No, it's all right. Did a good morning's work. Yeah, we'll finish by tonight. Where's Mrs. Marlowe? Same place she was yesterday. And the day before that. With Mace? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he picked her up while you're out shaking the fence. Well, what do you know? The only thing I know for sure is that he's mighty stuck on her. You can tell that, all right. It's like he's got a sign hung out. Well, it works out. You couldn't find a better man, I think. Well, let's hope it does work out. Only thing I hope is that you'll let us go into town tonight, Paul. What's so important in town? Well, tonight's the last night that prize fighter's gonna be there, and they tell me he's meaner than a treed wildcat. Well, it's all right, and have a good look at him. Hey. Well, you could use a thousand dollars, Hoss. Why don't you fight him? The only feller I'm gonna fight is you over that last spud. What do you think? Well, I think the last few days have cost you money. Well, I'm not complaining. When are you going to go back? Let's not talk about that. It's now that's important. So let's just enjoy it. Rita? When I get back to San Francisco, I'll uh, send you my address. I'd like to know how you're doing with the shop. words a woman wants to hear. But, well, we both know that we can't build a life together on dreams and kisses. I have a trade. We'll have a good life together. When? Next year? Hereafter? It's too long. I want to enjoy my happiness now. Well, I'll find another job. Still too long. I won't borrow. It's got to be ours. I won't share our happiness with anyone else. 
Mace, you don't have to. It can be the way you want. By going into that ring tonight. Five rounds, that's all you have to go. And with that thousand dollars, Mace, we wouldn't have to wait. I can't do it. But why? He's not that good. I know you can take care of him. That's not the reason. Well, then what is the reason? Well, it was fun while it lasted. I guess our picnic's over. Take me home, will you, Mace? Rita, does it mean that much to you to have the money now? Yes, it means that much to me. All right. I'll go against him tonight. We'll have our thousand dollars tomorrow. Then we'll... Will you marry me? Yes, Mace, I'll marry you. I guess I better take you back. But Rita, don't go see the fight tonight. I'll be out first thing in the morning. I love you, woman. Seeps in the house. Hey, who's fighting? I don't know. They'll tell us when we get in there. Here you are, folks. Ma'am, here you are. Rita, you sure you want to see this fight? Oh, Ben, I've seen men fight before. Don't worry. Uh, but listen, you go on in and I'll join you in a moment, all right? Ma'am, we'll be right down the front row. Come on, Joe. Now, surprise Mace didn't ask you. Yeah. Well, let's go inside and see what a Creed mountain lion looks like. She didn't say anything. I'll be right back. Mr. Martin? Hello, sweetheart. What are you doing back here? Waiting for you. I filled my end of the deal. You did great. Just great. Now I'll take care of you as soon as this is over. Uh-uh. Right now. Well, what's the matter, sweetheart? Don't you trust the old inker? Mr. Martin, as easily as I got Mace into the ring, I can get him out. So I want $200 right now because that crowd just isn't going to like it. Of course, baby, of course. I just had him a little laugh is all. Are you going to stick around and watch your boy work? First of all, he's not my boy. And I'm leaving on a stage in 20 minutes. I don't come much harder than you, gal. See you around. Did you hear? Why did you do it? Because I wanted to get away from here and it takes money. If you needed money that badly, all you had to do was come to me. Oh, really? Well, that's not what you said last week. Last week, I had to live up to my end of the bargain. What did you say to Mace to make him fight? That's none of your business. That you were going to marry him? Is that it? You lied to him. He'll climb into that ring thinking he's going to make a life for the two of you. And all he'll have to live with is a rotten memory of a lie. Well, a thousand dollars will help him forget. If ever you're in San Francisco, do look me up. You'll know where to find me. Go, Mace! 
Is that time? All right. Oh, Ben. Hello, Mace. Oh, did Rita tell you about us? Yeah, yeah, she told me. <laughs> I don't deserve a break like that. A woman like her wanting to marry an ugly mug like me. Mace, Mace, are, are you ready for him? Well, as ready as I can be. Oh, Ben, I don't have a corner, man. I'd be pleased if you'd act as my second. Yeah, sure, sure, come on. Folks, pay to see a good fight. Let's give them one. Shake hands. You're taking him. Every newspaper in the country will carry it, and we'll be on our way to the top. It's all yours, Mace. Now load it on him. Why doesn't he throw him? Uh, just wait, wait. He's just waiting for the big one. He better throw some little ones first. everything it's all gone now take him out in this round why i'm enjoying it i'm gonna chop him up for a while now you listen to me he was a great fighter he's still a lot of man don't strip away his dignity look you take care of things outside the ring i'll handle him in here for Rita and me. She isn't here, Mace. She's gone. What? I said she's gone. There's no need for you to take any more of this punishment. Oh, no. Oh, no. Rita loves me. She told me. She used you, Mace. All you meant to her was stage fair out of here. Oh, you're just saying that to get me to stop. It's all right. I can last, Ben. Don't worry. You had your laughs? Yeah. Now I dump them in your lap.
Before you leave, there's something I want you to see. I'm staying right here until the stage leaves. Woman, you're going to see what you've done. If I have to drag you, you're going to see it. You decide which way it'll be. Enjoyed is doing it for you. Why doesn't he fight back? Because three years ago he destroyed a man with his fists. It was legal, he did it in the ring. He killed him? No, it would have been better if he had. The man's in a mental institute. He's a vegetable. Mace takes care of him. But he swore he'd never use his fists on another human being. Stop this, Ben. You could have told him about me. Oh, I told him about you. But he wouldn't believe me. He refused to believe what you really are. So he won't quit. This may destroy him, but like you said, he'll have a thousand dollars to help him forget. Welcome back, Rita. Welcome back. Welcome back. 